It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Monday, December 18th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that is just so impressed with Sam Erson. Another shout out. Yeah, yeah, he's having a good time. Looks good out there. Yeah, we will get into that and the rest of the one to nothing win against the Red Wings. We're going to talk about the Flyers since that loss to San Jose, and we are going to name our nemesis of the week. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on the app formerly known as Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are at Locked On Flyers on Twitter, Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. And use the code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. You can find us over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Russ, that game against Detroit, uh, going into it, I, I felt a little shaky. I'm not going to lie because Travis Sanheim oh. out. Yeah. Out due to illness, and Mark Stahl checks in. Uh, you know, Carter Hart wasn't able to play again because he was still um, feeling the effects of whatever illness he had had. And this well, they said they have it figured out now, which I'm not sure what that means. But I, honestly, no. I just want to say this is just a personal observation. Give him another game or two off. He looked a little gaunt. I think he needs. He probably lost some weight. Yeah, yeah. So Sam Erson was in net again. Uh, the aforementioned shut out and hero of this game, I would say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um and uh just a side note, uh really bummed out for Alex Lyon who had to come out in that game for Detroit. Uh was like excited to see him play again at the NHL level, but uh that was kind of a bummer. Yeah, it was a little bit of a bummer. A lot of people were pulling for Alex. Yeah, yeah, myself included. Uh so it was really like on the blue line side of things, a, a next man up situation. And, you know, with this game turning into, you know, after, I would say midway through the first period, through the rest of the game was kind of a track meet. It was a lot of back and forth, a, a lot of fast skating. And I was like initially concerned about the Flyers being able to keep up. I think they were. And you you look at how the blue line reacted with Travis Sanheim out. Well, Rasmus Ristolainen played probably one of the best games of the season Yeah, for him. A just monster defensive effort. And then Cam York was activated offensively in a way that I felt like he hadn't been and was trying to like step up and be Travis Sanheim in a lot of ways. Yeah, I think, and I think he pulled it off for a game. I do. Uh, I think he did feel like, hey, I'm the guy now. I have to, and he's been the guy in other situations. So I did feel like he assumed that role. So that was good. That was good to say. Yeah, I, I really think so. And, you know, no, I wouldn't say everybody was perfect, but on the whole, you just looked at what these guys could do. I thought the Sealer Walker pairing was real good in this game um, yeah, defensively. I mean, you know, they're, they continue to surprise me. But yes, it was very good. Yeah, and I really felt like they just spent an extra amount of effort on their defensive side of the game. I think Walker, you know, has been stepping up offensively, but I think he just kind of buttoned down in this game, especially yeah, he, he did things offensively. But yeah, he wasn't as risk as risk taking for sure. Yeah, yeah, and and the fact that he uh, was just like taking that responsibility because of the nature of of the game i thought that that was another big factor is that the the blue line especially but the team overall really adjusted to the pace of the game well which is uh, again i think it, i was a little surprised by that because it's not something the flyers have done well traditionally right no this one i think they did do well with that and 
you know, we'll see. Maybe maybe that's a harbinger of things to come. Maybe they, you know, they figured that out, or at least at this one, they were up to the task. Uh, but either way, they, they definitely held it for this one. Speed-wise, they definitely held up. Yeah, I, I think that one of the other things we've been talking about is uh, their recent effort to balance out minutes a little better. And with Travis Sandheim out, you know, that had been one of the biggest problems, <laughs> you know, with him playing too many minutes. And now he was playing zero minutes. So how are they going to make it work? I thought they did a really great job. I would say maybe they overplayed uh, Couturier a little bit they did. in this, no, in this they game. Did. Yeah. especially because he was kind of wincing a little bit. Oh, he wasn't going to play in this game. Like, he just wasn't going to yeah. play if there wasn't an illness. So I'm a little worried about what he played in this game. I, I would be a liar if I didn't say I was. Yeah, I would say other than that, they did a really good job with balancing out the shifts and, and load management. I mean, I would have given Zamula a few more minutes, to be honest, but they're not going to do that. Tortorella will not give him more than 15 minutes. That's it. He's He's 15 minutes and that's it. And, you know, at some point for development, he should start to get more when he plays well and he played well. Yeah, I think so. I just think situationally, again, the way this game was going from a speed yeah. perspective and the back and forth, I think they were just being conservative on that front because Zamula has been known to make some of those mistakes and they just uh, were, it was like risk management there. And well, I, I don't you know, really again, blame them for it. You, he's not going to get better or take that next jump unless he gets put in those situations too. Sure, sure. But I do think that he got a little bit more time than usual. Yeah, he was like so, 15, 33 or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, other than that, uh, I do think, you know, Sam Erson obviously was a, the huge factor yeah. in this game. I mean, really both him and Huso had great games. No, they had great games, both of them. Like, for Huso to check into the game on the penalty kill was yeah. a tough assignment. And I I just, I really felt for him, to be honest. But I, I do think that both goalies were just tremendous in this game and, and kept it at that one goal. And, you know, I, I would say the other big factor in this was uh, Urson in the tail end of the game with the empty net, man, that was one of the most stressful, uh, you know, empty net against situations. Yeah. I think the flyers have experienced recently, Sam Urson, man, I just like, what an effort in, in that last couple of minutes. Yeah. It's just very, you know, very good positionally, very, um, sure of himself, didn't panic. I really, I give him a ton of credit. Yeah, I, I do too. And, you know, I felt like the defense was not doing the turtling thing that we've seen from the past during that stretch. They were, they were just being overwhelmed in what was already a, a track meet of a game. And I just felt like it wasn't necessarily their fault. Could they have cleared the puck a little bit more? Sure, but I just felt like Detroit was pouring it on so hard because it, it was just the circumstances of it that the Flyers were doing a solid job defensively. I wouldn't say great, but I would say solid during yeah, that. Yeah, I think Detroit had the wrong idea at the first beginning, just trying to play it safe, and they realized, okay, we can't. The Flyers aren't going to make mistakes here. And then, like you said, poured it on because they were down players. I mean, they were down some important yeah. players. And I think they realized we were trying to get some points here, so or at least a point, and they did do what they could to turn it on. And I think you're right. I think that's when they changed. Yeah. So overall, I would say this is a really strong effort from the Flyers mm -hmm. overall. Um, I, again, kind of stressed me out a little bit, but we got there and we got the points. And uh, I, I feel really good about it. I feel good about how this team feels about themselves right now. Yeah, there's no question they're playing with, with a lot of um, confidence and, and they feel like they could do certain things. I mean, you know, again, they're going to have a Travis Konechny question to answer at some point this year because this is a career year for him. And so yeah. that there's going to be a thing where if you're not going to trade him, are you going to be decreasing what you could get for him? Because right now he would be one of the hottest guys on the market if he were going to get be there at the deadline. And we don't know what's going to happen. So it'll be an interesting thing to see what happens with that. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, maybe if I was to give one critique of this game for the Flyers, you know, what you take away, I would say that the fourth line was going, not all the time, but some of the time, they were going for the hit and not the puck more than they should. Yeah, I saw Deloria just couldn't control the puck at all. And I got to be honest, and these are the last couple of games, and this is where it really kind of upsets me that Lixell can't draw in because Ryan Paling's not winning faceoffs. He's at 20 something percent on faceoffs. And you could put Scott Lawton on, you know, fourth line center and you could draw in Lixell if you really wanted to. And I wish they would have. I mean, Lixell got his one game because of illness. That kind of bugs me yeah. still. I, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, well, obviously that will affect the Phantoms, which we are going to talk about on tomorrow's show. So yeah. stay tuned for that. In the meantime, the Flyers have put together a tremendous record since that loss to the San Jose Sharks. And people keep talking about it. But, you know, let's get into what really has led to that stretch of games. And we are going to do that coming up next. Buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. They've got killer deals on all those last minute tickets. And with their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting excited for all the fun you'll have. My favorite part of the Game Time app is great for getting notified about those flash deals. Plus, you can get that all important view from your seat. And uh, they've got deals right up to the start of the event and sometimes even up to an hour after it starts. So you can get a super cheap deal. It is the place to find a last minute seat. Also, those tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through email. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with GameTime and download the GameTime app, create your account, and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem with the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. We will be talking about the Phantoms on tomorrow's show. And if some of the other guys stepped up, in the absence of Ali Lixell, some really interesting results there. Plus, uh, we've got the Devils again, and we'll have a mailbag later this week. So get those questions in. You can email us at LockdownFlyers at Gmail. Send us a message on the app formerly known as Twitter or comment over on YouTube. Russ, uh, much has been made of what the Flyers have done since that loss to the San Jose Sharks on November 7th. The Flyers are 12-3-2 since that loss. They are somehow, uh, remarkably, um, and much to my glee, in second place in the Metro Division, not just in points, but in point percentage as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's legit. Uh, we know that Metro Division is really crunched and all those teams in the middle, you know, are, are pretty close. So, uh, but the Flyers have been doing the things to stay up there. And it's been such an interesting narrative because uh, when the Flyers lost to the Sharks, uh, there was a lot of like snickering from people around the league and fans around the league. Like, oh, you're the team that finally lost to the Sharks to get them their first win of the season. And people were making fun of the Flyers. And I very distinctly recall at the time, I was like, there's nothing to worry about here. Like this was going to happen eventually. Yeah. I didn't get too much out of that. Yeah. Like the Sharks had just lost two games in humiliating fashion. Like yeah. they were going to step it up for this and game. No matter up what. They're six, three and one their last 10 now. Exactly. So like every team, like will have these turnaround periods yeah. and the Sharks, like it was just ripe for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And so I was not worried about that. Um, and lo and behold, the rest of that road trip went really well for the it Flyers. Did. And so I think it helped not only the Sharks, but the Flyers as well. And and you look at that since, you know, that road trip and that loss, the, the losses the Flyers have had since then, um, two of the five were overtime losses. Um, and I would say, you know, there was only two of those five losses. So they've lost to the Islanders, Rangers, Canes, Devils, and Preds. 
the Devils and Preds overtime losses. Uh, so there was at least some good effort there. The only two games that I thought were kind of out of hand for them were the Rangers game and the Canes game. They were in yeah. all, all of the other games. And so they've been in it in almost every game they've played since then. And I, I just really think this is this is a good time for the Flyers right now. Yeah, I mean, right now they're riding um, a, a good high. And you're right about them being in it. Um, for those that I think or maybe looking at them thinking if they're a serious playoff contender, then that's where you have to sort of analyze how they're doing against some of those other teams like the Rangers and the Bruins and those kinds of teams when they face them because, you know, they would likely face one of them in the playoffs or as a good chance anyhow, like the Rangers as an example, uh, especially if the Devils somehow didn't make it and they did, right? So you have to yeah. at some point, if you're going to entertain the playoff thing, you got to entertain – well, how are they going to match up? And then, you know, that's what you would do as a mental exercise. But right now, um, this is good. We've seen Flyers teams, though, have nice highs and big lows, too. And we don't know if a big low is coming. Like, we just don't know. Like, people have seen that the last couple of years. So 30 games in, I still am wondering what's coming. I, I do. Yeah, I mean, that's always in the back of your head. But if you look at those past Flyers teams where they've had dips, this is when they have come in early December. And I think that they've kind of pushed through that initial period when they've had these lulls in the it's past. This is an injury, though, more than the time of the year, I think. And like Fair. when Konechny got hurt, they died. Um, if Konechny or, or Couturier got hurt right now, they'd be in trouble, I think. So I think. I don't know. I, I do. Th I mean, I do think that they would be affected, but I think this team and the character of this team is different. That like the next man up mentality. I think in certain is positions, better. I think in certain yeah. positions, sure. But I think those two guys on this team, they're they're the two driving it. I mean, they're the yeah, two biggest that's fair. drivers. Yeah, that's fair. Um, it it's just that there there has been a lot that has gone well. There's oh, yeah. been some some things that are still not there and that's the nature of this team right now is that you know they are um you know since that loss to the sharks they're tied for the most points in the league they're second in wins um they are tied for the most shootout wins with three they have the top penalty kill in the league which is a huge driver of this success right now yeah there's no uh, question the penalty kill is important but it's just and this is where i have to I, I, again. I've got to look at John Tortorella because he's not going to do anything about Rocky Thompson and this power play. And it's like, if you really want to be a playoff team, this power play is going to kill you. And how long do you let it go like this? And yesterday it was bad again. It was. Yeah. It wasn't good. Right. And, and so I think that that's where you have to sort of balance expectations, right? So I think that, this is a team where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts right now. Yeah, I think that's, a, that's true. In a lot of ways. And I, I'm going to write it and I'm going to be happy about it. And I just want them to win every game they possibly can. Yeah, there's nothing wrong and, with that. And I'm having a great time. I think that you just also, while this is happening, have to start shoring up some of the things that aren't going well. So you mentioned the power play. Everybody knows the power play is terrible. No, but they're getting to the point where I think it's it's getting ridiculous. So as an example. Yeah. No, I agree. Putting Risto on power play too at the point. Like why? Why are they bothering with this? We know they tried it at the end of last year. It was marginal. Um, guess what? We got a guy named Throw Ronnie Adder. five Adder. forwards out there. No, but I mean, they got a guy named Ronnie Adder who's got a great shot. and. Somebody might say, well, he only has five goals in Lehigh. Yeah, because he doesn't have the same kind of players in Lehigh either. But he's really good on the power play. So even if you wanted to shelter his minutes, his shot on power play two would be a huge upgrade to anybody they have. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, there, there are some things that they're not doing on that front that they should be doing to try and improve things. Um, obviously, we know their faceoff percentage is not great overall no. you mentioned paling uh not doing well and maybe they need to switch it up lawton is better i think on the face off uh in the long run oh, yeah a lot better. Um, yeah and and then this strategy that they have utilized of just take all the shots 
Well, their shooting percentage is really low. And so I think like we're at a point where, yes, that aspect of their game is going well from a win loss perspective and don't give that up. But let's fine tune it a little bit and look at better shot quality. Let's be smarter. Let's practice those shots so more of them go in and you don't have to work as hard on that front. And then you can tweak all these little other aspects of the game while maintaining the same strategy that you've been using. And I think it's a win-win situation here. Because, like, again, taking that many shots is not bad. It's just like, let's figure out a way to make more of them go in. No, that's fair. Um, but who's not taking shots? Cam Atkinson. And, and this well, is a problem. Big bit, and now he's scared. I mean, he's down to three shots a game. And his shooting percentage is bad too. And yeah, there is one thing about being snake bit, but there is another thing where it's like, well, try something else with him. Yeah, you know, put him with different line mates. Do something else. I don't think they're doing enough of that. I think they're just leaving him out there, saying, "Well, it's Cam Atkinson; he'll figure it out." And I don't know; he's kind of in a ditch right now. Yeah, and that's where where I'm talking about the fine tuning. Yeah, let's not like break things that aren't broken. Let's keep at it. Keep that defensive strategy. Keep that PK. Keep taking those shots, but let's fine tune it so we can get the most out of everybody we have, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like overall, we're in a great position here. I think we're all in a position we didn't think we might be in at this point in the season. Let's keep it going and let's find ways to take even little more incremental steps forward. And I think this team can continue to be successful. Yeah, I, I, you know, I can't predict future success. I'm not going to go on that same path. But what I can say is there are ways to make it better. Well, we'll see what happens from here. But I, for one, am very pleased as a Flyers fan. Uh, in the meantime, it is Monday. So, of course, we will have our nemesis of the week. And we will get to that coming up next. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any five, any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If, you, if you're thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. I bet the uh, the over on the Monday night game between the Eagles and the Seahawks. The Eagles just lost Darius Slay. He's probably out for the season. Their secondary could get torched by DK Metcalf. This could be a high-scoring affair. Just saying. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and get in on the action this NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league like Locked On NHL. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe. Uh, Russ, real quick before we get into our nemesis of the week, Cutter Gautier is officially on Team USA for World Juniors this year. Uh, what does he mean to that team that is pretty stacked going into the tournament? I mean, it's really stacked. I mean, they're they're going to medal. Uh, they probably will win the gold. But nobody's ever a total lock in this tournament simply because no. of the, the nature of the tournament. However, um, he's probably going to be on the top line. He, he's got a super positive attitude. His um, playmaking has improved since he's become a center. Like he, So he could draw a lot of attention. He's the big shot on the power play. So all of that is a big deal. He's going to probably be on the top line with uh, Rucker McGrory and Jimmy Snuggerud, which is a hell of a line. And then they got the BC line as the second line. Uh, so... You know, this is, and, and there's seven or eight BC guys there, by the way. Yeah. Which yeah. is a lot. I haven't counted the full number, but he used to be the one guy, and now they have that many from BC, I mean. So, uh, but he's done the work. He looks really good from last time I saw him. And I've been watching video of him this year at BC, but up close, it's different. And in a camp like this, it's different. The reason I go to this camp is because these five on five drills are not. Just like, hey, we play five on five. No, no, no. 
This is like we play as hard as we can. Guys are hitting each other, they're friends, whatever. They're all trying to make the team. There's a few cuts. It gets to be some pretty good hockey. So he's really he there was no doubt he was gonna make it. He was never in danger. Right, right. Well, looking forward to that tournament. We will absolutely be previewing it on today on the show, uh, leading up to it later this month. Uh, turning to our nemesis of the week, last week uh, we talked about dealing with the changing expectations around the Flyers as there's more eyes on the team, as they found more success. Uh, we talked, you know, in the last segment about what's going well and what they can still I- improve on. And um, I think that's still a factor right now as as they continue to win. I think for me, the nemesis this week is the deja vu doldrums because this week we are facing the New Jersey Devils, Nashville Predators, and the aforementioned Detroit Red Wings, who we just played. And so, you know, teams we've all seen very, very recently, one divisional rival who is very keen on racking up points because of a shaky start. And the Preds just seem to be on a roll here as well. Um, They're one of the other top teams in recent weeks in the league. And so, and one of the teams we lost to, right? The Devils and Preds are are both teams we lost to in that stretch since the San Jose game. And so I just want to make sure that the focus is there for the Flyers in these three games because you know, the, I think that there's going to be a, a little bit of a revenge factor on both sides of the puck in these games. I think they could both get very physical, um, you know, with on both sides in all of these games. I think especially in the Devils game, uh, keeping up with the Hughes is going to be real difficult. Oh, yeah. And so I, I just don't want there to be any complacency here. Like they really are going to need to uh, step things up in all of these games. Yeah, no question. And look, this is a hard part of the schedule. Like even Nashville has picked things up, so that's gonna yeah. be, you know, that's going to be tough again. So my nemesis uh, is going to be the St. Louis Blues fans. Uh, I know Jordan Cairo a little bit, and I understand they love Craig Berube. I get it. He brought him their cup. I get it. But to paint Jordan Cairo as the guy or the reason, the only reason that Craig Berube got fired is not fair. And, you know, I've been told by different people, there's a guy named Terry Doyle, he had a real great tweet that said, Cairo has always had a little issue with the media as far as being comfortable. And I remember I, I've interviewed him more than a few times. And one time was um, at an event where I had a little bit of time with him. And after a few minutes, he warmed up to me, you know, we got some great stuff going. And so the fact that, you know, he was brought to tears, Made me feel like, yeah, the fans went a little too far with this. Now, of course, next game, he scores a breakaway goal, and he's like, listen, I love it here. He didn't say anything bad about Craig Berube. He just said he's not his coach at the moment right now. And I don't think that that was a horrible thing to say. Now, people could parse it and say, oh, well, there's better things to say. They could have trained. Yeah, whatever. But he didn't say anything bad, and I just felt like it wasn't a good look. And... I don't think people realize, you know, how much he does like playing there and how much he did take it to heart. I think they saw now and I felt bad. And I really, I, so I, I was mad at the Blues fans for that. Yeah, it was a really awkward situation where he was getting booed. I didn't really like it either. So I'm glad things have sort of settled down there uh, as well. And we'll see how the Blues do in their new administration. Uh, the Flyers don't see the Blues until. January. So looking forward to that. Uh, That will do it for today's show. Of course, tomorrow it's Phantoms Tuesday, and we'll talk about those New Jersey Devils. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. So get in your questions via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at Lockdown Flyers at Gmail or comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Have a great day, everyone.